Hello, hello. Welcome back, delicious superhumans. Back for another amazing session in the Superhuman Summit, and this is the Energy Series. I'm one of your hosts, AJ, and you've probably seen my other co-host, Michelle Crawford, earlier today. And this beautiful woman that's, I think, this side of me on the screen <laughs> is Babette Ben Susan. Hello, Babette. Lovely to see you. Wonderful to see you too, AJ. It's so been a while because we've known each other for a number of years now and met on and off, often down in Chatswood and down in Sydney. And now you've gone north, haven't you? You've gone I to the warmer weather. Sunny Malulaba. <laughs> oh, sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. <laughs> and I know because I've done some work with you and we've had lots of cups of tea and conversations that you do some amazing things in the space of leadership. And today for this energy series, you're going to talk a bit about energy leadership and you, and that's all of you. So I'm really curious to dive into this topic. And I know we've often talked about leadership, servant leadership. How does someone measure their leadership? How do you know when you're improving your energy and getting better as a leader? Because often it's seen as a very much a soft science and I know you can go hard on it. <laughs> I so, can, I can. I know. So why don't I hand the reins over to you and I know you've Thanks. got some slides to share and people I who have. are viewing, whether you're in Facebook land, LinkedIn, YouTube, if you're watching later, please do hashtag replay. If you're in any of those channels, please pop your questions, comments or anything at all in for Babette and I, and I'll be sure to be fielding those along the way. And and the other thing is, if you want the slides later, you'll get my email address. You're welcome to write to me and I'll happily forward the slides to you. Fantastic. So. We love a good resource. So make sure you email Babette later to get a copy of the slides. All right, let's share your screen. I will. I will. Thank you. So as you all know, we create the world we live in and how we choose that world depends a great deal on our thinking so just quickly to give you hold on, slides aren't moving okay <laughs> let me go to i wonder why the slides aren't moving i'll pull them down for a minute if you want to close them and open them up again all right. So do you want me to do that? I do apologise, yeah. everybody. That's uh, okay. Let, let That's me go. technology. That's what happens when we're going live. <laughs> you let me know when you've reopened so it. Do? So do I go to share, mm -hmm. share screen? Okay, I'm sharing the screen. So entire screen. No, I want the application. Yeah, choose the application. There and now go. there we go. So if that's okay, Beautiful. I'll work from here. Does that work with you, AJ? Amazing. Got it. Okay. All right. So just so that you know a bit about my background, um, my key focus is helping people to make better decisions. So one of the key things that I often have with my clients is, have you ever felt <laughs> either way? So a lot of people are either frustrated or unhappy at work. And we have leadership at every level. See, the one thing we need to remember is that you're a leader of your own life. It's not about people often think of leadership as motivating others and moving others forward, but it's not just that. Leadership is how well you motivate yourself to take action, to do things, how you feel about things. And it's important to understand those very aspects. It's, and so energy leadership for me is about developing an awareness of how you're showing up. So our energy is created by our thoughts. Thoughts create feelings. Feelings create our behavior. And behavior attracts like. You know, there's one great expression that the universe is not punishing or rewarding you in any way. It is. So how you think and what you feel um, is the way the universe, you will perceive the universe. And I always like this, motion is energy in motion. So the question then is, what are you attracting in your life? 
perception is a subjective thing uh, as if we judge things as good or bad, right or wrong, black or white, we're placing judgment on things. And the universe doesn't judge, it just is. And these kinds of thoughts create the energy of the world in which we live in. So often I ask people, are you an energized leader? And people go, oh, absolutely. But do you consciously choose to influence and impact others to bring about positive results? Are your actions consistent with your beliefs, your values and purpose? Most people say, oh, yes, 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 I believe in honesty. I believe uh, integrity and authenticity. Yet you're willing to accept inauthentic, you know, dishonest behavior because of power positions at work or in relationships or whatever. Are you aware that every interaction, in fact, presents an opportunity to lead, for you to lead, for your life, and therefore to have a positive impact on others. So when I was studying my coaching um, program in the United States, I came across a tool called the Energy Leadership Index, and I fell in love with it for the very simple reason that it looked at energy. And energy, as I said, is our thoughts. We create our thoughts. And a psychologist in the United States created this online tool. And what he said is that there are seven levels of energy. So levels one and two are catabolic energy. Now, catabolic and anabolic are chemistry terms. Now, catabolic energy is draining, resisting, negative, destructive type of energy. So while it's great energy to get you moving, you know, anger is a good energy. It can get you off your seat and doing things. Long term, you cannot, cannot keep staying angry. It imparts, you know, emotional, physical tolls on yourself, your colleagues, your family, and the organization. Anabolic energy is levels three to seven. And that is constructive energy. It's fueling, healing, growth oriented. And this energy allows you to have uh, more successful results, be far more positive. And the key thing is, is that when you're in anabolic energy, you're much more aware of opportunities. You're far more aware of options. When you're in catabolic energy, there are less options. So a lot of you, when you hear people say, well, I don't know what to do, I don't know, you tell me, they're in the catabolic state. So interestingly enough, all of us have all seven levels of energy. And the key thing is like attracts like, and that's how we create our world. So energy leadership is about breaking down or building up. Okay. So what I'm going to do in this presentation is I'm going to take you through all the seven levels of energy. And it'd be interesting for you to see as I take you through it, what level is showing up? Well, I'm sure all the seven levels are showing up in your life, but how are they showing up in your life? So let's start. And if you've got any questions, by all means, uh, please ask uh, AJ and she'll pass them on to me. So level one energy is lethargy. So it's uh, the energy of, whoops, what's happened here? Wow. Can you see it? No, let me go back to share screen again. <laughs> I am so sorry. I don't know what's happened here. AJ, can you? Share, here we go. Stop screen, it's still sharing. No, wow. Press, I apologize, everybody. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll go with this. <laughs> so, level one energy is the energy of lethargy, and it's all about someone who's the victim, they feel they have no power to change anything, they have no power to um, deliver, uh, they have no power to change anything, and their behaviour is apathy. You know, you see people go, huh, why bother, you know, and their key focus is around the thought, I lose. 
So it's around thinking of, I can't do anything. I can't change the world. This is the way it is. Very much the victim mentality. When I talk victim, they're at the effect of certain thoughts, feelings, emotions of, of what's going on. I think we're going to have to go back to share screen so that I can... Sorry, guys. I'm going to share the screen because for some reason the slide is not coming up anymore. I don't know what's happened. Um, hold on. Bear with me. I am having issues. <laughs> um, it's share screen. Share. Let's go. Application window. I've selected it. There we go. My do apologies uh, about this. Um, let's go to the next one. So level two is defiance. This again is catabolic energy. And this energy is about conflict. It's about anger and it's about defiance. The key thought here at level two is I win, you lose. Now, if you think about it, interestingly enough, this is the predominant energy in the world and in business in general. So what we have is a lot of people say, oh, we've got to go win-win, when in fact what they're really saying is I want to win, I don't care. So when you think about government tenders, the lowest cost this is all about I win, you lose. It's not about how do we work together to make the best products or the best quality. It's about how do I win and you lose. The law, in fact, is set up that way. People think the law is just or there's mercy. Justice and mercy is all about how do we all win together. It's not about I win, you lose. The next level is level three and now we're moving into the area of anabolic action again you know i'd like you to think about where does level one where does level two show up in your life how do you create it level three is all about cooperation it's about responsibility it's about now owning where things are happening it's about forgivingness it's about cooperating with others. And the key thought here at level three is I win and hopefully you win too, as long as I win first. So you've now moved out of level two and you're now moving in to level three. And it is about I win, but you want the other person to win. But as long as you win first. So you're very cooperative. Um, you forgive others, you start taking responsibility for who your thoughts, your thoughts, your feelings, your behavior, and you try to start repairing relationships. Level four is now about service. It's about service to others. And often, you know, you'll find people who set up not-for-profits, um, a lot of volunteers, genuine volunteers, you'll find that they tend to come from level four. And now at level four, we have concern for others. It is about having compassion and being of service to everyone. And the key thought here is you win. So we've started off with, just to recap, level one, I lose. Level two, I win, you lose. Level three, I win. And hopefully you win too, as long as I win first. And level four now is about how you win. The interesting thing that you need to ask yourself is how are each of these levels showing up in your life? Where do they show up? How do they show up? And why do they show up? Level five. Now, level five is the beginning of acceptance. This is where... We start understanding where we are as a person, where life is. It's about reconciliation. It's about accepting, as I call it, the is. Um, 
It's not anymore about proving. It's about we all win or no one wins. And a great example of a leader that came from that perspective is Nelson Mandela. If you think about his platform when he went uh, for the presidency of South Africa, his key uh, platform was either for apartheid was we either all pull together or South Africa will lose. So he was a leader who walked the talk of we all win or no one wins. Now, leaders at this level are very peaceful. They're very calm. Uh, they uh, don't judge as uh, frequently as others. Um, there is far more drive to reconcile uh, things around them. So this level of acceptance is we all win or no one wins. Level six is the area of wisdom. And it's about synthesis, joy, and wisdom. And the key thought here is we always win. Because if you start taking a longer view of life rather than a short-term view of life, you'll find that you do win in the long term. So I always think of some of the worst experiences I've had or others have had. And to be honest, if I hadn't had some of these experiences, I wouldn't be as resilient as I am nowadays. Um, through difficulty, and I think through difficulty, the phoenix will rise. And that for me is we always win. Um, as long as we take the long view of life and not the short-term view of life, we have a sense of understanding and wisdom around the level, around life and its meaning. Please note what I want to say to you is that we have all of these levels in us. The question always is which is the most predominant or which ones are the most predominant ones? The final level is level seven. And this is about non-judgment, absolute passion and creation. And the key theme here is that winning and losing are illusions. They are terms that humans created for the rules of the game of life. But winning and losing don't really exist. Um, again, this is no one, I have to say, resonates at the level of level seven because you really don't need to be here anymore. So to go recap, level one, I lose. Level two, I win, you lose. Level three, we all, uh, level three, I win, and hopefully you win too, as long as I win first. Level four, you win. Level five, we all win or no one wins. Level six, we always win. And level seven, winning and losing are illusions. Now, our realities are created by our perceptions and thoughts. Your thoughts create your energy. Uh, they create the energy level, and therefore that creates the world you know. So if you're looking for a different world, if you want to achieve something different, you need to look at your thoughts because that's where it all starts. So what causes our thoughts? What causes us to have an energetic stress reaction or a negative reaction? Well, there are several things. One is limiting beliefs. Then you've got your triggers. Then you've got expectations. You expected someone, a best friend, to behave this way and they behaved another way. Then you've got assumptions in life. I have a saying that um, and a terminology that I use always in when I do my coaching, and that's the gales. The gales create your energetic stress reaction. What's a gale? G-A-I-L. A gale stands for the gremlin. The G stands for the gremlin which is that little voice inside your head that says you're not enough or the imposter syndrome or whatever. A stands for assumptions that you have about the world and the way it should be, the should word. Um, I stands for interpretations. So a classic is somebody walks past and doesn't say hello and you're going to think, what have I done wrong? But you don't know what's happened in that person's life prior to them walking past you. So they may have had uh, a row with the family or whatever. And so we interpret it as being something about us. 
and L stands for limiting beliefs. So these gales impact the energy that you bring into your life or the reality you create, and they identify the stressors that are in your life. I thought you were going to say the gales, Babette, were like gale force winds. <laughs> Gale, G-A-I-L. -G -G -I -L, a different kind of gale. Gale, yeah. So because I use that, if we can, if each person can understand what their G-A-I-L are, then it's easier for them to understand how they're creating the energy that they have in their life and it's bringing in things. So let me give you an example of two people, um, awesome. their generalised profiles. And these are this Vicky victim is level one and angry Angelo is level two. So victim, so that you can see them because I'm sure you'll see them around you. So the victim who has a lot of level one energy is not confident. They're avoiding making decisions. They're unproductive, ap apathetic, uh, uncommitted, low energy. Sometimes we see this in teenagers as they go through life they sometimes feel they have no power so they work within a lot of level one then as they get older they start moving to level two which is the angry angelo but we see this in a lot of our employers and so-called leaders today they're confident you know i know what's going on thinks his way is the right way argumentative they don't trust others they suppress the creativity I'm coaching a couple of executives at the moment that are working. They're trying to work from a level four and a level five, but they're working with a level two uh, employer or boss. And uh, it's really interesting that once they keep moving into the level five, the boss does change. Um, I just find that fascinating. So when you want to shift, if you're looking to shift, from catabolic to anabolic, you need to understand your gales or your expectations or your limiting beliefs. You just can't shift because you want to. See, so you need to interact with other people. And you need to remember that catabolic energy is fed by stress. Anabolic energy is fed by engagement. And so this provides a tremendous opportunity for you to change the way you want to live, the way you want to see the world. And this is within your control. So let me give you an example. And I thought this is the best way. So this is the Energy Leadership Index. You do it online. And as you can see, this is uh, the one on the left is before coaching. The one on the right is their energy after coaching. So look what the difference. So the stress down the bottom. So the energy... Um, let me start again. So the energetic profile uh, index gives you three things. It gives you your energetic profile, what you're like when you're calm, everything's going your way. Then your energetic stress reaction, what happens to your energy and thinking when you're stressed. And then your average resonating level. Now, your average resonating level, think of it as a closing stock price. So during the day, someone will say, I loved your report, AJ. You did a brilliant conference, Michelle. Wonderful. And then you're going to go, oh, yes, you know, how wonderful. And then someone will say that was shit. Oh, excuse my language. But it, it wasn't good. It, it, you know, it didn't do this. It didn't. And then you'll go, oh, no, you know, what can we do? And, you know, or someone yells at you or does something. So during the day, your energy goes up and down. At the end of the day, your closing stock price is your average resonating level. So here's an example of someone who did uh, when they first started before the coaching. Here was their thinking. So you can see on the left-hand side that they were trying, they were people that at heart were far more anabolic. But look what happened when they were stressed. They went straight into the catabolic area. The key thing is that when you're in catabolic energy, you cannot identify options. You can't find your way out of, out of the situation. You get very stressed. 
Um, you think there are no opportunities, there's no option, you're stuck in a corner. Now look what happens after some coaching. Their catabolic energy drops down. You can see it from the percentages. So their level one under stress went from 36.8, it went down to 17.5. So in fact, after coaching, they halved it. Um, and look at the energy that went up. You know, their anabolic energy everywhere just went up. So these people are far more positive. They delivered far better results to their organizations. Um, see, the energy leadership thing index measures, in fact, three things. The first one is your current level of uh, leadership ability, how good you are or how able you are to motivate yourself as well as others to take action. The second thing is your current level of engagement. How engaged are you with the things in your life? How emotionally and intellectually involved are you with the things that are happening in your life? And the third one is your current level of consciousness. How aware are you um, of the things that are going on around you, um, of your behavior and others' behavior? Now, interestingly enough, you can only answer a question in any format of any kind with your current level of consciousness. You cannot answer a question in any other format because it's your current level of consciousness that answers the question. Once you're being coached, your current level of consciousness will have changed. And this is why you have different results. Here's another one. So here's another client. Again, uh, after three to six months of coaching, look at the difference. Their level of consciousness and how they could create their own lives and what they could do completely changed. It's and interesting one, how their top one, which is their first one's right, is that under stress. The yeah, yeah, the left hand side. And then when you move to the right hand side, that's the second energy leadership index they did. Yeah, right. It's a big shift, isn't it? Listen, and this is what, because all it did, it changed their level of thinking. That's mm. all really does and when you think about it if you can shift your thinking you shift your feelings you shift as a result of shifting your feelings you will shift your behavior and therefore you will shift the things that are happening in your life you have greater power and I think what's great about this, and as I was saying at the beginning, I love that you put the hard data around the soft skills often yeah. of leadership, but this is really valuable because as leaders, we need to track, we need to know how am I going, how will I improve? And other than hearing some feedback from people or something, it is really hard to measure. And I think the numbers don't lie. It's a really great way of visually showing people where they're shifting and maybe what else they need to focus on. Absolutely, AJ. And I've got to tell you, I've been doing this now for 10 years and the results are amazing. If we've got time, I'll show you two more at the end. I added two more at the end of the presentation, but only if we've got time so that okay. you can actually see. And this is what drew me to this tool is you can actually see how your shift, your thinking mm. shifts. And, that's what and if love. everyone has questions along the way, remember if you're in Facebook land, LinkedIn, YouTube, please feel free to pop your questions in. If you're watching the replay later, remember to do hashtag replay so that we know, but we'll always come back and uh, comment and share. So please feel free to ask Babette questions along the way. Oh, please do. <laughs> I can talk about this for hours. <laughs> I know you don't have hours, so it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> so. Let me give you an example. So as I said, your average resonating level, just going back, is the bottom, in the bottom, okay? So we know that this person moved from, uh, I can't see it, unfortunately, to a 3.84. So let me go back and I'll find it. Hold on. So they moved from a 3.34 to a 3.84. So I thought I'd show you and share with you then what the change of just 0.5 in your ARL can mean, and this has been studied and done on thousands of people in the United States and, and anyone who's done it. So what they've found by shifting your ARL, simply 0.5, 
look at this. I don't want to go through and read it all for you. You're all smart enough to read for yourselves. But a 10% increase in leadership ability, 15% increase in satisfaction with your relationships, 14% more personal freedom, improvement in time management and productivity, greater spiritual connection, 20% in overall combined energy. This is simply by shifting your average resonating level simply by 0.5. You know, it's not a lot. And some of them have shifted more than that, as I'll show, I can show you later. But it's so important to understand that the, just a simple shift in someone's thinking can change so much of their life. So here's something that you might want to reflect on a little bit more. The difference in the language that you used of anabolic versus catabolic. So catabolic people with, oh, I should do this, I must do this. And I love it when I say, when clients talk about must a lot, and I'm saying, oh, you're masturbating again. And so they learn not to use the word must all the time. Another one that a catabolic people go, yes, yes, but, you know, the moment you use the word but, Please remember you are negating what you've just said beforehand. Use and or stop and pause and then start a new sentence. Um, you know, people with anabolic energy will give better boundaries, will say what is more important to them. They are willing to choose and they can say this is not for me. Um, or uh, But they do it in, in such a way. Yeah, I just used but, didn't I? So this is a thing. It's your awareness of language. <laughs> I didn't so, want to be the but police. <laughs> no, no, but see, but, but it's important to understand mm. how we use words. Because language words is so powerful, isn't it? And it and even is. looking at that catabolic list, I hear a lot of people say maybe or I'm going to try, and you're like, well, you're either going to do it or you're not. There's right. no try. Like, yeah, that sounds it? like Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> Yoda says that there is no try. You either yeah. do it or you don't. <laughs> That's right. And I love that anabolic has choose at the top, right? Because we always, always have choice. And sometimes our choices are limited, but we still have choice. But, the, you know, the interesting thing, AJ, is that a lot of people don't believe they have choices. When you are operating from level one and two, you do not believe you have choices. You believe that other people, um, if you're in level one, other people control you and have power over you. And if you're in level two, you move to the bully area. Mm. So, for example, Scott Morrison could not apologize to Christine Holgate. He can't. Right. So there's something there in his thinking that for him to apologise means he's judging, that he right. has a right, which means he's coming from a catabolic level oh, of yeah. energy. Mm. It's, it's fascinating how this is reflected uh, in the language we use and in the world around us. And so if anybody in the audience is looking to change their life, start looking at the words you're using. How are you using anabolic words and use less catabolic? And it starts. It starts the board rolling. So my question then is how is your current approach working to bring you your, the improvements you seek? What do you believe you could accomplish if you and your colleagues or family were completely engaged? And ultimately, how is your thinking serving you today? Is it where you want to be? Is Are you attracting the energy that you want? I said to you at the very beginning, the universe is not punishing you or blessing you. The universe is responding to your vibrational attitude that you are emitting. We all know that energy, everything is made up of energy in this world. You mm. and I are all vibrating. Everything in my room is vibrating. Everything to you is vibrating. How is your vibration going based on what you think? 
you know, <laughs> when you talk about positive psychology and all the rest, and I'm saying, well, what are you drawing into your life based on your vibration? Mm. But just remember, if you think that you're being punished or blessed, then you're in the catabolic world. Right. So ask yourself, in what ways can I live with more anabolic energy? What opportunities do I see every day with, in situations or people around me of being more anabolic? So let me give you a big tip right now. I'm going to repeat the seven levels of thinking. Write this down. So level one. I lose. Level two, I win, you lose. Level three, I win, and hopefully you win too. As long as I win first, in brackets. Level four, you win. Level five, we all win or no one wins. Level six, we always win. And finally, level seven, winning and losing are illusions. So of the seven levels, whichever one vibrates the most for you, Repeat it when you go into meetings. Write it down on a piece of paper so you have it around you. So when I first started this, I have to admit, my ARL was a 2.9. And here I was thinking I was so evolved. I mean, I've done spiritual workshops. <laughs> I've done counselling. I've done, you know, I, I thought I'd be a 5.6. And I was at 2.94. I was so upset. But after coaching, uh, after doing a bit of coaching and the training in coaching and having a coach and me, they made us do the energy leadership again. And my ARL was a 3.6 or a 3.9 something or other. And then uh, a year after they we had been coaching, they made us do another one. And so about seven years ago, uh, I was a 4.6 ARL. Oh. So, but it shows you how my thinking over the, that period of three years changed. Um, and, and my motto for me now is I always go in. I went in for years with clients. How can I be of service to you? So I set my brain up to come in to level four energy when I went into a meeting room. How can I be of service to the people? How can I be of service to the people on this show? Mm. Well, now I, I work a little bit more differently and I say, how can we both win? Yes. How can I be of service so both of us win? And what are the opportunities? And so the opportunities are, yes, I know the Energy Leadership Index, but Here's an option at the end of this slide deck. I'm going to show you a special offer so that those of you who are listening can also win to understand where your thinking is. It's time to consciously choose how you want to live and lead. Mind management is, after all, the essence of life management. So think about it. What are the three changes you most want to make in your life? What are they? Okay, so three, three changes. Mm -hmm. What do you most want to achieve? What would you like to achieve? And that may be within the three changes, or it may be a, a vision that you would like. You've got three changes around your health or family or whatever, but you want to achieve this particular goal. The question is, are you ready to achieve? And it's interesting how many people get in the way of themselves mm -hmm. and then you know ask yourself what intentions do you have for your life presently and when I look at intentions I tend to look at values what are the values you hold dear in your life is it uh, honesty integrity or is it um, friendship and joy or is it um, you know 
uh, diligence and uh, outcomes. What are your intentions for life? And here is what is achievable. So here are three options that I you have. The first one is to take the Energy Leadership Index. Um, it's fifth. It, you do it online. I have to set it up. It takes about 20 minutes to do. And then I have an hour to debrief you. We can work together to help you shift your thinking. Or if you prefer, now that you've got the seven levels there is, and you learn a bit more, there is nothing stopping you being a coach yourself to your customers and work colleagues to get them out of that kind of thinking, to say, well, okay, so things are tough. What would you do to change that? What are some options? You've got heaps of questions to look and to ask people to get them to move to another level. So here's a special offer. I'm happy to do for listeners on this program, the on this conference, the Energy Leadership Index, including the hour debrief for half the price that I normally charge for all my clients. Awesome. And you've got until the end of May to let me know, and I'm keeping the offer open for until the end of May. So you've got six weeks to make a decision. Awesome. Um, and is that so, again just people email you? Because we've got your contact details coming across the screen right now. So there you are. Here's my uh, email address. They are more than welcome to contact me direct, ask any questions. I can send them more information about the Energy Leadership Index, about thinking. If they want some coaching, I can send them information about how to get the most out of your coaching. So, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's up to participants as to what they'd like to do. Fantastic. Well, I know there's been lots of chat in the chat box as you've been going. Um, oh, okay. Lots of people loved the idea of Gales. Some people were um, also sharing how it related to other scales they use. I know Michelle uses one in Being More Human called the Mindset Model, so they were looking at how it matched that. Um, I know for me, I really love the um, Scale of Consciousness by Dr. David Hawkins, and so I was looking at how it related to that as well. Um, so lots of nuggets of great stuff there and practical things people can do to manage their mind, manage their life and to consciously choose to live and lead, as you said, which I think, you know, the more that people do that and, and that's what this summit is all about is the energy. Every speaker we've heard has talked about mindfulness, has talked about meditation and has talked about 100% responsibility. You know, our energy, what we put out, how it impacts and leaves an imprint on others, everyone's talked about that. And I think you've just kind of encapsulated all of that so well and, and in a kind of workplace perspective as well as a life perspective, I think. Absolutely. And, and it is a life perspective because if you start changing your thinking, you do change your life. It's got nothing. You know, you look. You don't bring half of yourself to work. <laughs> You're still present at work whether you like it or not. Yeah. And so, and it's the same with family and friends. You're still you at your, with your family and friends. So, mm. yes, it's, it's all uh, part of the whole thing. And it is all about your consciousness. How, mm. in, And it's about your consciousness, which is your awareness and your engagement with life. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of people go through life as zombies. So a great offer that Babette left that for you all there. Make sure you contact her if you're interested in that. You don't want to be a zombie, right? So if you <laughs> want to embrace life, contact Babette for more Thank information you, on how you can get involved and do one of those profiles. The other thing I really encourage you to get involved with as well is our superhuman experience. If you haven't heard Michelle and I talk about this already, it starts on the 3rd of May. It runs for a number of weeks. It's all online, but it's live. So you'll be in a beautiful, intimate group and you'll be able to go deeper and become more conscious. Consciousness is something I bang on about all the time. So you're speaking my language, Babette. Thank you for um, wrapping up a lot of what we've talked about today. We have one speaker left, though, so don't go away if you were thinking about it. 
you do have time to make a cup of tea or have a little bio break. So do go and do that. But hang around because we've got the amazing Rebecca Gibson coming up after Babette. And Rebecca is a dear friend of uh, ours, Michelle and mine. And she is going to talk about the evolutionary empath which is a really big thing when you're thinking about consciousness and is very much about your awareness of how you take on other people's energy as well. So if you want to go deeper, join us for the superhuman experience and come back in about five minutes and check out myself talking to the beautiful Rebecca Gibson. Thank you, Babette, from up no there and in I'm the far forward. north. Anybody, if anybody has any questions, don't hesitate. Excellent. And remember to also contact Babette. She's happy to share her slides. So thank you for your generosity. And thank you to all our speakers for their generosity because all of our speakers have donated their time for this summit. Michelle and I don't make a cent out of the summit. It is done with the whole idea of sending love and joy and raising the vibration and consciousness of everyone. So we thank everyone who's participated, commented and spoken like Babette has. We also want to quickly just thank BizTech Global, the team behind the scenes. Thank you, Marlon and Dee and all the guys behind the scenes, as well as the Being More Human Dream Team who are doing lots of things and sending all the emails and keeping the logistics going. So we couldn't do it without all of you. Come back very soon for Rebecca Gibson. Much love to you all. Thank you very much, AJ.